I suppose I should start by explaining what copulins are. Copulins are a series of fatty acids that are released by the vagina at the peak of ovulation, at the, at the optimum time for impregnation. It notifies the male of the species that the female is ready to be impregnated. Uh, in the 70s, they did a great deal of research on pheromones in general, but there was one particular study that was done on copulins that found that when men were exposed to copulins, their testosterone levels rose over 150% in under 10 minutes. Uh, they also found that when men's testosterone levels were up like this, uh, that his ability to judge a woman by looks alone was compromised. He would actually, in the study, men who were um, not exposed to copulins and men who were exposed to copulins would rate images of women as 10 to 15 percent more attractive when they were exposed to copulins. So, that's the advantage of why a woman would want to wear copulins. Uh, as you age, your copulin levels fall. If you're on pharmaceuticals, your copulins fall. If you're on birth control, it, it, can, it can, can actually have some of the acids, but not all of them. So you, you'll actually give off a, a different signature. Also, if you're, if you're ill, if you're physically ill, you won't give off uh, the complete spectrum. So basically nature's saying, you know, you're not good for reproduction. So that's why you would want to wear copulins. Now we get a certain number of women who have men with low testosterone levels, and they write to us in hopes that if they wear the copulins or they allow their, their men to inhale the copulins, that, that, that maybe it will raise the testosterone level. I don't believe that that is the case. I believe in a healthy male, you're gonna get this 150% uh, uh, spike. But in, in men who are not healthy, I don't think it's fair to say that it's going to do that. You might get a little bit of a rise. You might, you might have some results, but it's not going to fix your man. The reason that most men have are having testosterone problems right now, especially in the United States, is we have a poison food supply. We are consuming chemicals at an unbelievable rate. We we are eating them. We're applying them to our skin. We're uh, just bathed in chemicals from the time we get up to the time we go to sleep and even while we sleep. But our, our food, if you see me looking over to my left here, this is where my notes are. This is where I'm making sure that uh, I don't leave anything out. Our diet is our worst culprit. In our diet we have xenoestrogens. Now I should explain, testosterone is a male hormone. It's what makes a man a man. Estrogen is a female hormone. It's what makes a female a female. Now e each sex has a little bit of the other. Um, a woman with no testosterone has almost no sex drive. A man with no testosterone has no sex drive. Um, there's other benefits for those, a small amount of those hormones in, in the opposite sex. But we have a, a diet that is so high in xenoestrogens, which are a chemical estrogen, that uh, our men are literally being, being devastated. Their testosterone levels are falling, their sperm count's falling. They're being feminized. We, we, this, this comes from I don't know, we've, we've got not only the food supply, but we've got, we've got uh, poisons, whether that's for killing bugs or, or killing grass or killing weeds or, or whatever. Those tend to always, always be estrogenic. We have um, the chemicals that are used in food plants for, and I'm talking processing plants, for cleaning the plants that get leached into the food. We have stuff that, that cleans the food, extends the lifespan of the food. Unfortunately, it shortens our lifespan, but it ex extends the lifespan of the food. We have um, also phytoestrogens, which are a plant-based estrogen, which uh, soy is the biggest culprit for, for the, uh, the phytoestrogens. Um, I know that uh, mainstream says that, that soy is a, a, a wonder food, but in reality it's not. It's a dangerous food. You shouldn't eat it. It's not good for men or women. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't digest well. It's a large protein. It doesn't process. It actually blocks the receptors for digesting good proteins. People are actually starving to death while they're on it. Um, so it's not, not something you really want to eat. I would suggest doing your own research. I know that everything I'm saying is kind of flies in the face of what you're going to hear on the media. I really suggest that you become responsible for your health and your if you're the one that's actually looking into copulence to raise your, your man's testosterone levels, you're the one who's gonna do the research, he's not. So you are the one who's gonna to have to figure this stout, stuff out. Look into xenoestrogens, look into where they're at. In fact, xenoestrogens are even in perfumes. Uh, you will not find that in any of our products. We, uh, phthalates are one of the, one of the um, 
chemicals that contribute to the lifespan of a perfume, but it's also incredibly toxic and destroys the reproductive systems of men and women. So you won't find it in our products. There's, there's actually, I'm gonna make another video that explains all the things we don't have in our products because I don't, I never really told anyone. I've never really used that as an advertising uh, uh, purpose for purchasing. So I, I'm gonna do a video on that as well. But back to the xenoestrogens, the phytoestrogens, the pharmaceuticals also, if you can find an alternative way to solve a problem, do it. Try to stay away from pharmaceuticals. They're, they're, they're dangerous. Uh, another problem is lack of exercise. Uh, our men don't exercise, and I don't mean running or jogging or aerobics. Those actually lower testosterone. I'm talking about resistance training of some type because as men, that's what we did. We, we, you know, we lift stuff, we move stuff, we're, we're stout. Nothing on this planet runs and runs and runs and runs. Nothing. We will run in bursts to catch something to eat, to keep from being eaten, or to catch something to have sex with. And no matter how you look at it when you're done, males sleep. That's the way we're designed. Um, also, excessive alcohol is gonna to contribute to estrogen levels. Pot is estrogenic. It mellows you out because it's feminizing you. Uh, not enough animal protein. Now I know that one again is one of those ones that are going to sound strange and vegetarians are going to be, be screaming. But in reality, the fats that come from grass-fed, free-range animals are exceptional for creating sexual hormones. They make good hormones. What's not good is the chemically polluted beef and chicken that we get from the big producers, unfortunately. They use a tremendous amount of hormones to make the animals grow as big as they can, as quick as they can. And unfortunately, those hormones also make us big and fat and, and contribute to our demise. I have a friend who is a um, plastic surgeon, and he says that he is doing more breast reductions. He's making more money from breast reductions for men now than he is breast enlargements for women which kind of tells you the uh, state of affairs in here in the United States. Um, there's a series of books that are really good on, on how to raise testosterone levels. I will try to, to get them listed beneath this video. Another book that's really good is Pace. I think it's by Dr. Al Sears. I could be wrong on his name. I'll clarify that below as well. Um, Pace is uh, the reason why endurance type sports aren't the best for us and, and the guy's right on the mark. Uh, if there's anything else that I think of, I'll make another video. If you have any questions that I can clarify, um, just post them below and I'll try to make another video or I'll amend this one or I'll answer in the, in the list below. So anyways, that, that should do it, so thank you.